So this soap challenge might be my favorite one ever in Amy Warden's back catalog, just period end of, because it actually combines two of my most favorite things about soaping, chemistry and Auntie Clara. And I'm going to tell you all about today's challenge and why I love those two things so, so very much in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 337 of 365 days of soap, and we are doing Amy Warden's Ghost Swirls Challenge. That's Amy Warden's Ghost Swirls Challenge. Just one big jumble of things that came out of my mouth there. Yes, and these are actually inspired by, and I think taught by Auntie Clara, I'm pretty sure, um, regardless, Auntie Clara's website was the first place that I actually saw these. She does like playing with the chemistry of soap more than anything else to actually do cool things within her designs. She plays with glycerin rivers a lot, which I love. And that's how I found her in the first place because it seemed like I was the only person on the planet who loved glycerin rivers. And then Auntie Clara entered my knowledge sphere and it was delightful. And yeah, ghost worlds. Very cool because you're not actually using colorants or if you are, you're just using one. And based on the way that you actually approach the batter and use your lye solutions and your concentrations, you can achieve very cool swirl patterns in your soap without any color at all. So that's what we are doing today. I'm very excited to actually get to it and talk to you about it more in the video. So, you know, let's go there. Okay, so first up, you should just pause it right here if you want to actually make this using this recipe. And uh, we're doing ghost swirls today, guys. And uh, ghost swirls are actually very cool. Auntie Clara does this. And I think she was the one who actually did the challenge for this particular thing in general. And uh, we are using cocoa butter cashmere from Maple Street. And the vanillin content is 10.72%. So as we saw, in the ultra thin lines at like you know eight ish percent this is likely going to discolor now for my soap we are using uh, a red clay i'm going to do a red clay for the um for the clay in this particular recipe now because i don't want to add any extra water and normally for my clays i disperse them in water but so much of this has to do with the water content in your lye solutions. I don't want to add extra to the batch and then just mess it all up, right? The whole ghost swirl creating two different essentially colored soap batters in one, you know, batch of soap to create your swirls and whatever. So instead I went ahead and I dispersed it in the oils from the batch. So uh, I'm actually, it's not even a red clay, this is actually a rasool. So that's fun. Yes. We talked about Rasool Clay yesterday, right? We did that. No, we did that. Yeah. And uh, no, we didn't. I did not talk about Rasool Clay. Okay, never mind. My bad. But yeah, so for this, what I am doing is I, again, I created two separate, um, two separate lye solutions. And so one is at 30%. Uh, and what is it 45 percent now really if, as you saw in that recipe what that means is it's the same amount of lye for each of these portions which are equally measured out after i have put the um the clay into the entire oil batch weight but what really changed with the two of them was the water content in it 
And this one that I just put in, that is the 45% um, lye concentration. And this one here is the 30%. So you can see there's a lot more volume in that because it's about, it's like two plus ounces more of water in the 30% lye solution than the 45%. So that's awesome. Now, what we were thinking, what, what the whole, you know, this, and this is, it all goes back to how to create glycerin rivers, how to get your bars to cure faster or harden up quicker or all the jazz. So much of it, or how can I extend my trace? So much of it has to do with the amount of water that you are putting in solutions. And for that reason, I've said multiple times before in various FAQs and all the jazz, when we're doing glycerin river soaps, it's um, all about how much water you're putting in. That's why water is such an arbitrary, uh, number in soap making and really the only hard and fast rule that you ever need for your lie to water ratios is how much you have to have as at least as much water in a soap recipe as you do lie and other than that it, it's fair game do your thing yes now i went ahead and i just took a the stick blender to it really quickly and then i'm going to just hand whisk everything um from this point on because i do want the two different portions, the two different lye concentrations, the two different batters to basically be the same level of trace throughout the pour, just to make it easier for the whatever. And so the one on the left is actually thickening up faster. That is the one with um, less water in it than the one on the right, which totally makes sense. Now, before I go ahead and pour this, I will put in my scent blend. Now I went ahead and I split those out evenly as well. So there's no guesstimating. Usually I guesstimate with the, with the scent whenever I split my batch into different sections or whatever. I don't ever fully measure things out, but we do want this to be as precise as possible to um, make sure that there are no you know, we're controlling all variables essentially with something like this. And so, you know, that's cool. Love that. And this will be, we'll talk more about the whole concept of ghost rolls and everything within the pour, but this particular, you know, stage is ready to go. And you can already see, even before I put the scent blend in, just how different the colors already are, which is awesome. And you know, that's, that's cool. That's that's what's going to create the cool swirls without you having to use any sort of color. And that's cool because chemistry is freaking amazing. And let's go pour these things and we'll chat more about chemistry. Okay, now on to the pour. Now with the Amy Warden Soap Challenge challenge thing for this, she actually created a bar doing sort of just different layers of the two colors. And so I thought, hey, why not? I'll do that too. Sounds like fun. And I actually don't remember whether or not I decided to take a hanger to any of this or if I just let the swirls kind of exist on their own. Not sure. But you can see, again, we have a darker and a lighter version already, which is super cool. Now, the discoloration. I intentionally used a scent that I knew was going to discolor based on the vanillin content. I knew nothing else about this scent. I didn't really know if it was going to accelerate or anything, but nothing on Maple Street's website said that it would. However, Maple Street can be a bit uh, hit or miss with soaping notes, so I don't actually remember whether or not it had a thing in it. And yeah, look at me. Hello, disaster. Every time I do this, I really do. I go back to uh, I Dream in Soap, and Lisa's saying, don't be a messy soaper, and I still feel attacked. <laughs> like, not that she, you know, obviously it wasn't directed at me, but it's like, oh God, I am a disaster at all times. And this is more disastrous of me with uh, whatever. I don't know why I ever even tried to do the whole spatula thing because it never works out for me, especially not when I'm literally working around a camera. So I'm just going to spoon another layer of the first batter down and you know, then do the things. But anyway, the reason why I chose a scent blend that would discolor is because as it discolors, it's going to really amplify the differences in the two lye solutions, the two different batters in this, and really make those ghost swirls, you know, even bigger and more pronounced, which is freaking awesome. 
and I love this. Now, if you don't want to use clays for something like this, you totally don't have to. You can use nothing. You can just be your natural, you know, soap colors, which is great. Or um, you can use micas in your entire batch or whatever. But kind of the point of all of this is you are creating swirls without color. And so if you do use micas, obviously just use the one color of mica and then do the thing. And look at that. I'm going <sighs> to... The easiest pours for me are always the messiest. It's very strange. But yes, so doing this with the clays, just because I, I have to get clay into a soap somehow. And so I didn't want to use white because I wanted, because I knew it was going to again discolor. So I wanted to get it to a color that I was reasonably certain it would discolor to, you know, and go from there. But actually white with this and the discoloration would have been very interesting as well. But that's not what I did. I wanted to play with Rasul. So yeah, this is all another really important part of this is the heat cycle, which totally works for me, right? Because I seep up everything. And so that would be a step that I would suggest you not skip if you were going to attempt a ghost swirl. You need a heat cycle because it's going to help everything saponify uh, quickly and really allow those different colored swirls to super emerge, which is, you know, beautiful and awesome and great. Actually, after I did this, I ended up liking um, this pour so much that the next, the next class I taught, the next, next soap class I taught, uh, we did ghost swirls. And ever since I did the, these classes, it was like the next, like, I don't know, like nine or 10 classes that I did. I've been just getting loads and loads of DMs from everybody in the class who have actually taken my classes quite a bit. Um, so many people in the class sending me their, um, everybody sending me their pictures of their soap cuts and they're all just completely blown away with it because it really is legitimately a fun pour. You're doing this and you're thinking, there's no way this is going to work this is all going to end up the same color, you know, whatever, but they're sending me all these pictures of every single one of them had a successful ghost swirl, which I love and I thought was totally cool. So yes, there's that. And I think I do end up deciding to take a hanger to all of this and just to really push the colors into each other. You can kind of do whatever you want. You can do an in the mold swirl, you can do an in the pot swirl, you can do literally anything to this to make everything make all the colors really, you know, meld and mingle and do all the things. So yes, cool. I'm taking a hanger to it because that's fun. Why not? But again, the biggest thing with this is this will be put in the oven for sea pop and gel. I do want to get heat to it to really help these colors and these uh, swirls really, you know, stand out and the two different soap batters to really start standing on their own within. And part of that has to do with the gel phase and uh, the heat cycle and more of the water being removed from the batch sort of faster, which is super awesome. Now for just the last little bit of soap batter I had left, which again, you can tell the difference, but only just, I thought I could put a little bit on top and just do a little swirly swirl thing. So the top of it would be, you know, colored as well, which could be awesome. And that's what I'm going to do there and see if we get some cool little swirls on the top of the bar as well but other than that this is totally ready for the oven and sea pop and gel and covering and all of the jazz to make all of the beautiful ghost rolls really stand out so let's go check out this cut and see what we have going on inside this beautiful loaf of soap okay i don't know if you just heard any of that but the soap and clay kid let's claim clambering up the stairs wanting to know when they got to eat and you know the answer was now and so now i'm gonna eat too and we're going to unmold this bar and again you see both of my hands there so if you hear me eating it's because uh if i do the audio afterwards i'm not eating while i'm opening while i'm unwrapping soap because that would be impossible but yeah we're gonna take this out of the mold and see what we are working with and I never actually show you the taking things out of the mold, which I don't know why, but ooh, look at that. That's super cool. This bar is very, very shiny and those swirls, they look lovely. That's awesome. Isn't that fun? Chemistry is just so freaking amazing. And I really look forward to seeing what's inside. Now, an interesting thing with cutting, cutting a ghost swirl 
is it's actually kind of hard to cut, right? And that has to do with the fact that you have two different, again, lye concentrations in here. So essentially, one section of your soap is like harder than the other, and that is cool. And it has really interesting texture in it too. It's uh, do <sighs> so you remember the chlorophyll bars for the tall and skinny shimmy? This is what I was thinking maybe was going on ultimately with all of it. Um, because when I did the tall and skinny, skinny shimmy, I actually did not soak that to a, a proper emulsion before I separated the batter into, you know, the different sections to start the pouring of the tall and skinny shimmy. And as I thought about it, I started wondering if maybe the soap was wanting to fall out of solution and instead of doing so, because it's in a heat phase, it didn't, but it created interesting texture. And I'm thinking that's what it is after seeing these ones too, because there is definitely a different, like there are ridges between that more ready color and the kind of more beigey color. So I think that had something to do with it. The lye concentrations were a little bit weird in the different sections. And again, it was trying to fall out of solution because it wasn't quite at an emulsion, but the heat phase, the C-pop, wouldn't allow it to do so. These are my theories. So anyway, um, the cocoa butter cashmere for this is delightful. This is a really good scent blend. Um, it's actually kind of funny because so many candle makers, chandlers, swear by this scent blend. And I've never picked it up. But when I decided to review Maple Street, I thought, why not? I have not done much with Maple Street, so I certainly have not come close to touching really any of their inventory. And so I'll pick this up and check it out. And it worked out really well. Now it will continue to discolor, as you saw in the ultra thin lines thing that we did a couple days ago. It discolored pretty significantly at 8%. So at 10%, it's going to continue to darken, but it doesn't matter because it's all Look at that. That's cool. It's all going to be awesome. And uh, very, very cool, fun with science, fun with chemistry way to make soap. And I think it actually might help soapers start to understand uh, the importance of different lye concentrations and how you can use it in your soaping, which is badass. Like, you should know these things. That actually makes you a better soaper, uh, easier and faster than you know, just watching a, oh, I want to see what the pretty design is. Understand your light concentrations and your light solutions. That's gonna be, yeah, understanding the chemistry. And this is just more soap chemistry. And I really do love these bars. They're absolutely gorgeous. They smell great. And it's just a fun pour just in general for anybody to do. And again, you, you don't even have to use micas. So this is great for the people who go all natural and they don't do micas or colorants or anything. You can still create cool bars of soap without you know, using that stuff. So that's awesome. And that is day 337, the Amy Warden's Challenge, Ghost Swirls Challenge, taught by Auntie Clara, and absolutely gorgeous. So I'm on a super big red clay kick these days, and I thought that that was perfect to do a ghost swirl with, and I was right, because those bars are amazing. And yeah, it's it's totally cool. This is all about the chemistry. So what you do with your water reduction, what you do with your water content, while it is a very arbitrary thing within soap making, the way you modify that changes a lot of things. As you can see, it changes the way that it swirls, the way that the bar hardens and saponifies, most importantly, uh, or too much water or an increase of water. You can get glycerin rivers. You can do all the cool things. And so there's a very easy in your face, example of the differences that you get when you uh, start doing water reductions or increasing your water amounts, really. So if you're interested in this uh, ghost swirl, you can totally find on the website tomorrow. The Soul Apprentice still needs to do her ghost swirl. And you know, the scent blend on this is so amazing that I know they're going to sell it immediately, but you should definitely try to get them because A, they're really pretty and stunning and awesome, but the scent is just so good. Love it for sure. So you can find those at soapandclay.com tomorrow. If you would like to follow me on social media, sure, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
Awesome. Uh, if you would like to see what else we do for the channel and all that jazz, you should subscribe. That would be cool. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, uh, thanks. You're cool. I love being able to call you my sudzer. That is a fact. Let me know how you, li how you like the ghost swirls, you know, down below in the thing. Help the algorithm. Yes, uh, I'm out of here for today. Thank you for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Bye.